Hi guys, it's me here. So this is a totally different angle. Why? Because, well, I need to be able to move the camera around the room for this block that we're doing today for a Dresden plate. And to be wiggling you guys too much, I set the camera up to where I can turn it around the room so you can see multiple different machines and my pressing area and so on and so forth. So if I'm looking that way, it's because I'm actually looking at the screen to see comments while I'm waiting for my phone, because I got a new phone too, finally. Ah, oh, there it goes! To load so I can see comments without having to look that way, you know? That way I can read, so see, I got a new phone. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm gonna give it a second and chit chat and wait for people to come on. So I didn't get to come on yesterday. We had no internet for three days here. Oh my God, it was horrible. I couldn't watch YouTube videos. Uh, I could barely go on anything and watch videos because it would be that loading thing. Because, well, even with the new phone, the service sucks. My phone service itself sucks and our internet sucks and everything sucks. But they fixed a, a broken fuse in our internet thing today. So obviously that's fixed up and now I have internet. So, and I'm sitting on my ab ball because since my issue at the hospital and spending a couple of days in the hospital and six days total in bed at home, I sit on my ab ball now to sew at the other machine because it makes my back feel a little bit better so that I don't have any pinched nerves from sitting in a solid chair, which was the chair that's for my little machine. So, obviously, I'm like so close to you guys but i have no other way without moving the camera a bazillion times that they don't want to have to adjust it again so um yeah let's see we've got june and teresa hi teresa oh hi billy glad you guys are here um i'll wait for at least another minute for more people to come on just so i can have some views and then I'll get started. Today we are going to be making a Dresden plate. I would hold it up, but I can't because it's over on that side of the room and the camera will get turned so you guys can see what we're doing. Um, if you guys are in the group at all, uh, and if, if you are subscribed to my channel, don't forget to go down in the description below and join the group. For those of you who are subscribed to my channel, there's a group. I post things when I'm doing stuff. I've been working on a Dresden plate and I saved for today since we didn't have internet for Sunday yesterday. I did some sewing myself, which is pretty much what I teach you guys. I decided to make Dresden plates and I saved one block so that I could show you guys how it's made because I don't know, I haven't really looked, but there might not be full tutorials from start to finish on how a Dresden plate is made. So I would like to at least show you guys how Dresden plates are made. So hi, Michelle. Hi, Betty. So yeah. Other than that, things in life, I'm doing a little bit better. I'm still in an MS attack. I am slow. Everything is super slow, except for my talking, obviously. <laughs> um, other than that, I'm doing everything pretty slow. That's another reason why I wanted to set the camera up this way so that I don't have, you guys, my shaking is horrible. So that way you guys don't see the camera just wiggling like crazy. I don't want to make anyone seasick. <laughs> so, um, Today was foot Dr. Teresa, so he was trying to get a splint. I need to wear like a, a special splint for my foot. And uh, my insurance don't approve it, so they're trying to figure out a way to get it approved because I need it for my foot. So, Or else my foot just throbs constantly and it falls. It doesn't stay up. It's like drop foot. So it just stays down and it's annoying and it's pulling on tendons and stuff and it's killing me. So we're going to get that situated. All right, guys. So... Says I have eight. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you guys how this is done. So there we have a Dresden plate. I'll adjust it just a little bit this way. There. You can see we have a Dresden plate. Yes, it's, it's very common for that to happen. Um, I'm going to drag my phone around with me so I don't have to turn my head to look at the screen. So here is what we're working on, or what I'm working on that you guys are following, is a wonderful Dresden plate. And I'm going to show you how to cut out the Dresdens, as well as how to make a circle that goes in the center, as well as what it goes on, how big it is, and so on and so forth. So let's get started. 
So I'm going to move this out of the way. First of all, to make a Dresden plate, you have to have a Dresden template. Unfortunately, there is probably no way around this unless somebody actually did the measurements and held it on a specific degree angle to even get how this sits. So uh, if you want to make Dresdens and you don't know how to do it, run out and get yourself a Dresden ruler. Um, I got myself this one online. It's Easy Quilting Company, and I bought it so long ago it's even got that random nasty sticky stuff on it that's been used. I've made lots of Dresdens. Dresden is my second favorite block of all the blocks that I like. Um, but yeah, go out and get yourself one. This is a smaller one. They do sell bigger ones. Um, Missouri Star Quilt Company has a pretty tall one. It's probably a, ten, a little bit over 10 inches because it fits on a 10 inch square. So, um, but I'm using five inch squares for my Dresdens. And what you're going to do is you're going to, obviously, I'm using my five inch line right here. And we're going to lay this on here. I'm going to come as close to this edge as possible because this side won't be salvageable. But what I'm going to do, lay it on here, my five inch line. And I'm going to cut the one side. And I'm going to put my hand and hold this and cut the other side. If you're not both handed, then I guess it would be um, harder to do. So I'm going to pull that away. And now I have one. So from a five inch square, see how my sticky gets stuck to this? We're going to get two out of this one piece. And there's a special side note for these. After you cut these two, there's not enough room to cut a third one. So what I do is I save this big piece. This piece right here is savable because in the end, it's going to make a special project. So I'm going to put that aside. This one is too skinny, so I just discard that one, which I have a whole pile of them from my cuts. So this is what you would get is Dresden plates. And so that you see, these are my 20 Dresden pieces because you need 20 to make one Dresden plate. So here are my colors. And I'm going to take you guys over to the sewing machine and show you how this works. So I'm going to take all my pieces. I'm going to throw them over to the sewing machine and we're going to turn the camera to the next angle. Look at that. So much easier to do it this way. So I'm going to come over here to the sewing machine. And I'm going to show you guys just how this works. And we're going to chain piece all of these. So here, I'm going to put the camera just a little bit over. See how much better of an angle this is, guys? I like that it, I can move it. Obviously, the motion thing is different, but at least it's not shaky. So we're going to take one Dresden. Let's see an angle that I can put it in that you can see. And if my light is too bright, let me know now because I can just put my little light dimmer in. But we're going to take one piece. Since this is white, it's kind of hard to see. And we're going to fold it onto itself like so, matching up these corners at the top, right sides together. And then for more accuracy, what I do so that it stays and feeds under the machine without this little bump catching is I kind of just finger press a little like notch in it. And then I slide it under the machine with a quarter inch, quarter inch stitch length. I sew that through. So I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to fold it over, make a little pinch in it so that it stays like I said, if you don't make that little pinch in it, then what's going to happen is it's not going to catch right in the sewing machine. And it'll like shift the whole piece. So I just line it up like so. And I mean, you can probably start them from this angle if you wanted. But I like to start them from this side because this side is the side that's going to be folded into that Dresden tip. And I want that seam to be sealed better. So I put that under the machine first. For some reason, it seems to seal it better and it don't open. So I'm just going to do this to all 20 pieces, just chain piecing all of them through. And some of my um, pieces have silver in them. They're really, really cool. These are really, really pretty. So we're going to sew all these through, all 20 of them. 
don't forget that quarter inch seam. I have that quarter inch foot on here. You guys can probably see it has a little marker right here. Instead of using my magnet, I'm using the quarter inch foot so that I can have a little bit more accuracy this time. This actually goes pretty quick. It's not really, I don't know. The part that takes the longest is the applique part, which we will get to because I'm walking you through the whole process. So let's just slide all these through so we can get to the next step. I have such a disaster going on in my room too, so I've been so busy making stuff this whole project <laughs> that I've made a mess in my room. So I hope my video is coming out good because my TV in my bedroom wasn't working that great, so I was hoping that when I go live, it would go really quick and easy. You probably can tell I'm a little bit slower because of the shakes. I'm trying to do it, but I'm trying to stay steady. It's kind of hard, though. I can't force myself to be steady when I don't. my body doesn't want to. How's everybody doing today? Everybody having a good start to their week? Nice little Monday. Hi, Sandy. We are making Dresden plates today. Well, a Dresden plate and just showing from start to finish how it's done. So once I get all, all of my 20 pieces sewn like this, right sides together, fold it in half, and I will go on to the next step. It actually, like I said, goes super quick. Okay, two more pieces. Okay, last one. And I'll show you the next step. All right. So obviously, Get out your little snipper thing and snip them apart. Make a nice big huge pile. Or you can use your scissors or snips or whatever you have. I just so happen to have this thing from Michelle. And it helps so much easier for me. <laughs> Makes it so much faster instead of playing with little snips. So once I have all 20 pieces separated, move my little chinny out of the way. What we're going to do is, I'm going to call it this right here in front of me. A lot of you know what this thingy is, right? My husband calls it the shank. I have a wooden one, but it's broken. I don't want to break it any more than it already is. <clears throat> so if you know what this is, this helps with the turning. I don't use it right away. What I do is I stick my hand right here, and I take right here and push this over to one side, and I use my fingernail and flip it out and I'll flip all the pieces first and then I come back after flipping the pieces and I take my sharp point you can even use a pencil or a pen and then I push that point out like this just a little bit so that it's nice and sharp and when I said that's why we started at that fold end like or you know it helps it stay nice and closed off so that my pointer does not push through so what I'll go and do is point out all these pieces first. So I put my finger down, I twist it out like so, and then I'll come back when it's done, obviously, and push that point out right here. See, nice and sharp point. That's what we want. So let me get to pushing all these out and then come back and point them. So I just make a big, huge pile right here in front of me, twist them down, turn them out just like so. I just make a pile in front of me. Makes it so much easier to do it this way. It's like I chain piece the specific areas of doing this. And I'll chain iron all of them as well. <laughs> as you guys will see. It makes, I don't know, for me I'm all about the, the handy dandy faster way to do things. So I don't like to sit and, I don't know, when I have to sit and ponder on something it seems like I never get the project done so if I just go ahead and do it as fast as I can then I don't get 
bored of it and especially bored of it and i make sure that it gets done like right now kind of thing and then i don't have to come back to it because it's already done so i just turn all these out so again i'm just going to push this to the side using my fingernail if you don't have a fingernail it's okay because you have that pointer piece so just pushing it out folding them down just like so it's quite simple just fold it down my thumb is underneath this holding it to one side and a lot of people oh I, I could say I've seen this before some people snip off this corner right here um, I find when you do that you actually take that chance of hitting that one starter seam piece and you end up ruining it and you end up poking through so I just leave it in there it's just fine to leave it in there okay so see how pointy that is super pointy so i'm gonna come through push all these points out with my little shank piece <laughs> i'm gonna call it a shank because that's what my husband calls it and that's what it looks like it looks like a shank from prison movies except normally there's a wrap and tape for some reason kind of weird but whatever i'm gonna push all these through make it nice and pointy that's how we want it as pointy as i can get it and that seam isn't even in the way when we go to press these it's already pushed to one side so that makes it so much easier all these colors are so amazing this quilt you guys are going to love what i've done with this quilt it's mostly put together so <laughs> and when i say mostly it's because it was missing this block and it's the center block also because i was only able to make eight i started with four 20 piece charm squares packets so technically it's two uh charm packs if you two 40 piece charm packs so it was enough for me to make eight blocks and i had no mess ups which was good but i made eight blocks and my ninth block because i'm making a large nine patch my ninth block is going to be an applique something or other i have no idea yet all right now we're going to move to the pressing area so hold on two seconds as i spin you around now we're at the pressing area. I'll bring the phone with me so I don't have to look at the screen for comments. Put all those pieces there. Turn my iron on because it wasn't on. So we have all these wonderful pieces. And what we're going to do to press them, now that the points are out, so I'm going to turn them this way and see that seam is already folded to one side. So I'm going to line that piece up with the center of the block. And it's not really hard to do this. It's a small block, so it's easy to center this up. It lays just right. So as soon as my iron is nice and warm, I'm going to show you. I'm laying that right there. I'm going to stick my iron on it, just like this. And I use steam for this one. And it stays nice and flat, so this is what we get right here. A nice sharp pointed piece. So I'm going to stack that aside. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to line that seam up with the center of this block. Like I said, it's really easy to get it lined up. I'm going to stick the point of my iron on first. Lay it here. Oops. My steam pushed it out from under the iron. Give it a little bit of seam. And then another nice pointed block. More piece or however you want to say it. So again, the latest right here, making sure it's center. Put the iron on it. Give it a little bit of steam. And this goes pretty darn quick, this process. And I'm going to switch because I'm not that handed with the iron. For some reason, I cannot iron with my left hand. I always come from the top anyway makes it so much easier and if you think it's not center okay so this one's not center see it's off center a little bit that's okay just shift it over where you want it hold it down and reset your iron down on it and it'll recenter it all right so i'm just going to chain press all these pieces making sure lining my center A little bit of steam. This 
sliding my pieces out of the way. Again, all you need is 20 pieces to make one Dresden block. So if you want to make just one block, you can. But a charm pack can make, uh, let's see, five blocks. No, four blocks, technically, with a little bit of a remainder. So two charm packs makes eight blocks, and that four charm packs would make 16, and so on and so forth. If that makes any sense. So depending on how big you want to make your quilt, that's how, or how many Dresdens you want in your quilt. I'm just doing on mine as eight, but that's okay. Oops, I lost my comment screen. Oh, there it is. Again, that little piece is already situated one way. I kind of just look and hold, and it usually lines up pretty straight all on its own. <laughs> like I said, this doesn't take very long. Obviously, since I'm making a video, it's taking longer than it normally would. I have to pay attention just a little bit more when I'm making videos to make sure I'm telling you guys and doing all the things I want you to. To learn about doing this. But when it comes to that Dresden template, like go on Amazon or something, I think mine was like $4.99 for the easy uh, one that I got. But I don't know, Missouri Stars is probably $19.99. You never know. They're all different prices. So now I'm just going to take all my pieces, stack them up, take them over to the sewing machine. Well, actually, I'm going to show you guys something because I'm doing mine a specific order. So we're going to take all these pieces. I'm going to turn the camera and I'll meet you over on the table right here. So mine are in a specific order. As you can see, all of my blocks are laying the same exact way. So what I'm going to do is take all my pieces and I'm going to put them in the order that I want them in, but I'm just going to do it from the machine. So I'm just saying you guys can randomly put your pieces however you want them, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I am going to just follow my piece right here. I'm going to look at it while I lay them together. So I'm going to throw these over at the sewing machine and show you while I stare at this piece on how I put them together. All right. Again, I'm not chain piecing on this one. This one is going to be individually snipped every time because I don't build Dresdens the way everyone else does. I think it's faster the way I do it. All right. So I'm going to start with this piece because that's my first one. And the second one is this one. So I'm going to put them right sides together. What you need to make sure of, and you can pin this if you want to, is that these two points right here at the start, and I always start on this top corner at the points. I don't ever start from down here because you take the chance of shifting the fabric as you go, and then these end up off like that. You need to align them as perfect as you can get them. So you can put a pin in it to hold them together if you want, or you can just hold them down to the machine like so, right sides together, and I always, always on Dresden's take a back stitch at that top piece. And then I line the rest of the piece up because my needle stays down. And I shoot down the rest of the piece with a quarter inch seam. And then I cut it and I use my finger to finger press the seam. Now some people, oops, let's get it right here. Some people press this seam open for their Dresden's. I do not. I like the way it lays when I leave them just the way they press. So I just press from this one, from the first to the second piece. And now I'm going to grab my third piece. I'm going to put it on here. 
lining up this top right here as perfect as I can get it. I'm just going to leave it just like that. I'm going to put it under the machine, take a back stitch, then line up my piece. Quarter inch seam, I'm going to take and I'm going to finger press this towards that side, towards the piece that I just attached. Now I'm going to grab my next color, which is a pinkish one. Let's see. That would be this one. Again, I'm going to take it, right sides together, aligning this top piece right here. So I want it to be as lined as possible. Take it to the machine, keeping it together. You can put a pin in it, like I said. But I don't need to. They line up just perfectly fine. Again, just going to hold it and finger press it back. And I'll show you guys right here. See, they line up just fine, even without a pin. You're looking for these pieces to come completely together, equally. See that? That's what you're looking for. Okay. So I'm going to grab my next one and I'm just going to keep going so you guys can see how this works. Line it up. I just hold it with my finger. For that moment, my finger press it back. And sometimes it feels like it shifts, but it's actually not shifting. Line them up. If they're pressed nicely, they should lay just right. I always take a back stitch. Don't forget that back stitch at the beginning. All right, then I'm, I'm going to grab my next color, which is this one. Right sides together. I'm going to align that top. Don't forget to line that top up. They are right on top of each other. There is no room. Back stitch. Then take that piece and line it up the rest of the way. Again. Just pressing my seam that way towards the piece I just added every time. All right, grab my next color. I like your camera there. That's a good shot. Look at that. Yeah, it shows my ironing board if I turn it. It shows right here if I turn it. And it shows that machine if I turn it. And then it shows me if I turn it just a little bit more, but only my face. <laughs> okay. Which is good enough. All right, so back stitch. Keep it down. Align the rest of the piece. And sometimes your Dresdens, especially if you used pinked edges from a charm pack, they are not always going to be the same length. Just because it's from a different piece from the charm pack, they're always going to be different. They're never going to be the same. It's very weird. They said, hi, Scott. How are you doing? He's good. He's, yeah, I'm he's good. I'm not in. the one that's having all the issues. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you, Sandy, for your post the other week. We watched it. Oh, yes, yes. I forgot to say all that, Sandy, since I saw you come on. Thank you for sharing an update with everyone and praying. That was amazing. Yeah, that was I really came, cool. Thank you. I left the hospital against medical advice with the promise to the doctor that I would get into my doctor as soon as possible to start a specific treatment, which we found out they don't even do here. So instead, my neurologist here, my acting neurologist, is just putting me on medication to get me out of the episode. And then I'm hoping it gets approved for me to start a new um, treatment because I was on the wrong treatment and it was just worsening me. There was, there was no change. So, so, all right. So now we have, now that I've changed the subject, now I have 10 pieces on here so far and <laughs> mine are in order. So I'm going to start with the beginning again. And keep going with my order. So I'm still going, but I have 10. Most people stop like this and put two sections Before you together. Get done, let's show me I do not. Order. Yeah, well, I have to. Move I know. The camera I'll help later. you. I'll help you when you get done. All right. You know. So next piece you. goes back to the beginning. My first piece. I just keep going, guys. I do not stop in sections. I just keep making the whole thing. Like I said, to me, this saves time. Doing it this way. 
And you know me, I'm all about time saving. But where I was, Sandy, thank you very much for all that. I very much appreciate the support from all of you guys, all of my subscribers, and all my new subscribers that um, I've gotten within the last couple weeks. I appreciate all of you, and the, everybody that's new, don't forget to go join that group so you guys can see off-screen posts as well as updates, because I do update when I can't come on or when I'm doing something. That stuff other than quilting so that you guys know when I am or am not on. So, let's see. That was, okay, hold on. I'm trying to read comments at the same time. Turn. Thank you, I appreciate it. Da, 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 da. I suppose it's great. I'm great. I'm going to come out now. Please take care of others. I already read that part. Obviously, you're showing me now. Well, that doesn't have to be Yes, Sandy, you guys are all part of the family. You guys are one big, huge family of mine, and it's amazing to have you guys all supportive of me. I know with my MS, things are I'm normally really good, but I don't know. This last couple weeks has been horrible. One thing after another. But I should be good once I get on a new treatment. And I am off my old treatment. So I shouldn't get any worse. I should only get better. But all I know is I hate being in bed. And six days in bed was too long for me. Way too long. I couldn't walk. Had to use my wheelchair. It's so annoying. Very frustrating. Can't get up and go to the bathroom. The attack was so bad I couldn't even control my bowels which and bladder which is not very fun either for a youngster like me, <laughs> which you guys call me a youngster. I'm not really that young, but my kids would be considered youngsters. <laughs> but anyway, it's really nice that I have everybody's support. See how this piece was longer? It just happens, obviously, like I was saying. With charm squares, you never know. They're all different. All right, next piece is this one. Yeah, I have mine in a specific order. I only did that because I'm trying to control my scrappiness. So I'm going to put my trust to not find you on Facebook. Okay. I will do that when I get on later. Uh, next piece is, what's the next one? This one. Again, don't forget, I'm lining these top pieces up like super. I know you guys can't see for some reason it's blurrier than the first time I was up on the screen. And don't forget to keep really accurate on that quarter inch seam because if you're not, this Dresden will not line up. And let me tell you, it's not fun when it doesn't line up. All right, next piece is this one. Look at that, I'm almost done. See, this goes actually pretty darn quick, guys. I'm telling you, dozens are not hard, and the look of them is absolutely amazing. So, yeah. One more piece after this one and remember all I'm doing is finger pressing it towards the piece that I just sewed on whether it's dark or light there's um, no nothing I just do it anyway whether it's dark or light because the seams aren't going to show it's going to be applicated onto something else so it's going to be hidden anything anything will be hidden any mess ups or seams Okay, I'll look later though. Okay, so you're young to me. I'm younger than your kids, Betty. <laughs> wow. Oh well, I'll be 40 in well a year and a half now because this year I turned 39. So, all right. So here we're at the end. Obviously, you guys don't have that much of a view of it. I'm trying to angle it just right, right here. Ah, where am I at? Right here. Okay. So here's the opening. 
I need to close that opening because all the pieces are now sewn together. So what I'm going to do is take this piece, put it right sides together over it. And again, I'm just going to start at the top, aligning these two pieces right here. Just going to align these two and hold it down. Oh, I shifted on my way down right there just now. Slide it under the machine. Backstitch like always. And even though we have this whole pile right here, don't worry about that. You don't need to worry about any of it, just the two pieces as if it was two pieces. Line those pieces up. Because see how I have to adjust it? You can see me lifting it. Line those two pieces up and sew on down. And all I do is I open this side up and I finger press it before I get to the ironing board, to the seam that we just sewed together. So all the seams now are going in one circular motion. All right, let's take this over to the ironing board. Ready, turning around and wire. Don't get all busy on this one, guys. <laughs> all right, we're coming over the ironing board now. All right, so here we have the Dresden. It looks bumpy and lumpy. That's because it's not flattened, but technically it's laying pretty darn flat as is. So we're going to get my iron to reset itself. What we're going to do. So we're going to take, and I'm just going to put this iron down on here. And, and since all of my seams are going in this circular direction, I'm just going to take the iron and go in that circular direction <laughs> until they're all laying flat. Trying not to catch anything. There is no right way or wrong way to iron it. Honestly, just don't drag. You pick the iron up. Set the iron down, add some steam. You can go around it once it's flat enough, like so. So see, like super, super duper flat. I didn't have to join two seams. I didn't have to do two and then two and then two. I just kept adding the next piece. To me, I think they lay super flat just like this. So now I'm going to just lay this aside for a second and I'll tell you and show you what we do with the next piece. So, because I can't really cut another one, unfortunately. So here's the Dresden, right? This background piece right here, this right here is 12 inches. I personally, so that you have room for a seam allowance and everything, would go, what I did, is a 13 and a half inch square. So this is on a 13 and a half inch square. And it is a white on white. There's polka dots on this print. If you guys can see, there we go, it's right there. So this is cut at 13 inches. So once you have, well, let me throw that out of the way. Once you have a 13 inch cut, as you can see here, there's my 13 inch square. I'm going to take this square and I'm going to fold it right side or wrong sides together, lining up this right here. Bring it down so you can see a little bit. And I'm going to press a crease on the fold right here. Then I'm going to take this end and I'm going to fold it onto itself this way, lining up these two corners right here, or technically four corners now. Line it all up and then I'm going to make a second crease. Add a little bit of steam so it creases quick. And now when I open it up, I have a creased block. We need it creased for a reason. So I'm going to take you guys over now and show you how this is done. We'll come over here to this section. All right. Lay that out of the way for a second. That out of the way for a second. And move all these little pieces. We're going to lay this right side up right here. Okay. Right side up, like so. Oh, am I not in the screen all the way? At least you can see three pieces of this screen. We're going to take this Dresden, and some people use this angle right here, the inner part. I always line up my outer point. So I want this point lined up here. Then we're going to come down, because I know you can see this one down here. I'm going to line this one right here. This one should line up right there, and that one should line up there, knowing that's how you get your block centered. Don't worry about this crease in the middle. 
all that will go away on its own in time. So again, this is lined up with a point, this is pointed, that's lined up with a point, and that's lined up with a point. And the reason why I do the point is to know how much bigger a block needs to be. Um, like, you know, so when you're right here, when you measure out on a Dresden, depending on what size you're doing, if you did this with six inch blocks, then you would need a 15 inch block on the back side. So if you think about it, this is a 12, so this is a 13 and a half. The reason why I did half is so that I have my quarter inch seam and still have some space in between to have fun with the quilting part. So I lined this up and then this up and this up and this up and it lays nice and flat. Then what we're going to do, take pins and you are going to just stick some pins in it away from this edge. So you don't want your pins near the edge. Don't worry about the edge. Just stick pins, keep it nice and flat while you're putting pins in. I know you guys, I never pin projects, but this one you have to. I mean, there's probably other ways around it, obviously, but do not put the pins near the edge though, because the edge is for sewing, for applique. So we're just gonna put, I'm putting eight pins in here total. That way it's nice and flat, nothing shifts, because I don't want no shifting. I'm just poking my pins in. One more. So once you get your pins in, see, it stays nice and flat. Like I said, don't worry about this in the middle. That's going to go away after it's, it'll shift on its own during the applique part. So now we're going to take this over to the other sewing machine where you can do an applique stitch. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you do not have a uh, machine other than a straight stitch, you can straight stitch around the edge this whole entire thing so you would come down shift the block come down this way shift the block come down this way about an eighth of an inch away from the edge because this is not a raw edge seam it's not it's enclosed now so it doesn't you don't have to worry about it so if you do not have a, a, a machine that does zigzags or blanket stitch and you only have a straight stitch machine like I said, straight stitch around this whole entire thing along the edge with a semi-matching um, thread color because a straight stitch, I don't know, if you get any wobblies, it might look kind of funny. Um, that's kind of, I think, why we blanket stitch or zigzag stitch on things. So, all right, let's turn it around to the next segment. I'm going to take this block over and we are going to stitch it. All right, right there okay so this is my brother machine which has a blanket stitch i don't have very many uh, i'm in front of the camera for a second you can see my big ab ball that's what i'm sitting on to be comfortable because i don't have a soft chair for this machine so it puts me down in a really good position all right let's see what you said i'm gonna look at the comments real quick Okay. Your youngest will be 47 in August and your oldest will be 52. Boy! Well, maybe they are older than me. Uh, Sandy, we're going on a show. We're going on a showing drunk. A showing? What are you talking about, Sandy? Oh, my turning with the camera? Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, so I have turned my machine. You guys can't see that part, the number area. But my blanket stitch is 15, but it's really, really tight. So I took a practice piece of fabric and I sewed down it until I had the width that I wanted. I am also using a really pretty purple thread, which I will hold the piece up closer real quick so that you can see the purple. Can you see it? I'm using purple thread. So here's the back. You can actually see better. <laughs> That's a purple and let me tell you, it looks really, 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 really good with the purple blanket stitch. So that's what I'm going to be doing right here. Turn myself around. I can't keep steady on this darn ball. <laughs> I'm not used to sitting on it yet. All right. So I'm going to put my machine, and I'm going to start right here where my crease is. It seems I have better accuracy if I start right at that tip, keeping where it's supposed to be. I'm going to kind of start about, I don't know, a half, a quarter to a half an inch down on the tip right here. 
instead of exactly at the tip because it's going to want to go back which will go onto the white we want to start down just a little bit because we'll come back and go over it i'm going to line it up about an eighth of an inch away from the edge because i know my furthest needle comes out that's why you want to test on a practice piece practice piece <clears throat> when the needle goes back and forth i found that that outer piece where that guideline is going to be so that's how i know so we'll start down here and i'm just going to go around let's see how fast we can do this all right i'm pretty quick with this i try to pay attention as best as possible i get it to a certain point i turn when my needle is in a specific position and i come down the next way And I wait for that position to be in, and then stop it, turn it, and down. And all the while, I am still holding this nice and flat. For any of you who haven't applicated yet, it's still holding everything nice and flat. So we're going to go stitch as fast as I can, paying attention to back into that corner, paying attention to all the positions of the machine. You'll get used to where it's going to land as you work with your pieces. Back. I kind of know where they land now where that needle is going to land with the stitch length that i have set and you know me i like to sew fast so even though i have to stop a bazillion times and adjust And it's just nothing but back and forth turning, lining that needle up. Let me turn my machine down. That way I don't have to go too fast. And I leave the pins in until I'm absolutely done. Then I pull them all out. back nope i went too far on that one so if you go too far just pull your thing back and readjust it should stay right there there we go one more stitch Yeah, I figured it'd be easier if I turned my camera guys like this because for some strange reason it um when I do it with shaky hands you guys don't see anything and I have a harder time adjusting so I decided to pre turn the camera on and see where it was gonna land if I set it up a certain way for all the machines and the sewing area and the cutting area to be seen only thing is is it's hard for you guys to see me when I want to uh, talk, <laughs> which is okay. I know you guys probably prefer that position the best when I talk, but I know you guys have been wanting to see more of what I'm doing and until I can set up the multiple camera system, I can't show you very much. <laughs> Me and my camera issues, always camera issues, let me tell you. Every once in a while I have to readjust it if it doesn't land where I wanted it to land. I'm trying to make sure it does every time.
I know some people that do Dresden's put the little center circle on first, but I actually save that for last. And I do it this way. This, I don't know, for some reason, I like the way it, I do it. It comes out easier for me. Now you see why I didn't put any pins at the edge because I would have tried almost got close to running them over if I did. And see, I'm getting to that point again where I'm at the every time I get to a point. It lines up just nicely. Let me tell you, this app ball and sewing machine, it puts me right directly in front of it. It's actually quite, uh, visually, it's a lot easier, guys. If you have an app ball and a, a low sewing desk, I would try it out if I were you. Because I'm like literally right here. <laughs> You guys can see, I'm like right in front of it. I can see everything, making sure that it's lining up nicely. We're almost done. So I'm getting close to where I started. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim off that excess thread. Throw it out of the way. Let's put it back in front of me or else I end up knocking it over. Now I'm on that piece where I started is I'm going to come right over it. And the funny thing is that actually the stitches end up aligning. Well, they have been aligning. All right. And I just come a couple stitches in and look at that. They're right on top of the stitches that were previously there. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut this away. I'm going to pull pins out so that I can show you guys. Take them out real quick. I just remembered that I had eight in here, just in case any fell out. Because yesterday I had a couple fall out while I was stitching. So I'll make sure I have eight. And now what we're going to do... Margaret Richardson. I don't know who Margaret Richardson is. All right, I'm going to turn the camera back over to the cutting area so that you guys can see. So here's this for a second. Put my pins away. Come back over here now. All right, so now that this is on here, you need something to go in the center right here. I chose black for mine. What you need to do, now there's two different ways you can do this. You can do that whole sew on the, oops, let's see if I get the angle. Sew together this uh, web stuff. I, I don't like this. And then applique it this way. I actually don't like this way. I don't think, look at that. It's so funky. Even trimming it and using that little device thing that, you know, this wonderful thing to push everything out for some strange reason, it didn't come out the circle I want. So I just decided to go ahead with raw edge applique for this. So what I did was I found a cup until I found the right cup, I kept putting a ton of different cups on here. I want it to go over this at least a half of an inch. Um, it's really hard because some of them aren't straight. Like, like I said, some of these are different sizes. So some areas are like an eighth of an inch taller, which adjusts your size. So you want to be able to go around a half an inch bigger all the way around. So I cut out a piece of paper and I took that piece of paper and I put it over my black fabric and that, uh, this stuff right here, this Helen, um, wonder under fusible web stuff. 
and it's two-sided. So you iron on the rough side first. Where are we at? You iron on the rough side, you can hear. And then the soft, smooth side is the side that stays on the top of the block. And I went ahead and made eight of them, obviously, because I did eight blocks. And I'm going to take this piece after I drew them all out, and then I took scissors, these little guys, and I cut around all the pieces that I used to draw with my Sharpie on this paper itself, which works out perfect. So you'll need a Sharpie, some scissors, you know, unless you want to use a rotary cutter. I tried, but it never comes out straight with the, you need like an applique rotary cutter and I don't own one of those. So, all right. Once it's on here, you can take a pin like so after you iron it on and it just splits it like so. And it pulls right off, leaving the glue like on here. So it comes off really nicely, just like that. And then I just have to throw the paper away. You guys can see that. You can tell, let me hold it up to the camera. This is the sticky stuff. Don't put this on heat just yet and do not iron on this side. It'll get stuck to your iron. So what we're gonna do is put it wrong side down, which is sticky side down. And you're gonna center it. To center it if you want, you can do the same exact cross thing like this back and forth two ways and then line that cross up with your center lines right there and then you take it over to the ironing board which we're going to go do right now and press it down so let's go back to the ironing board Okay, so it's still adjusted just a little bit. So it's nice and center. And get that iron turned on. We're going to leave it right there temporarily because this is raw edge applique. I'm waiting for my iron to go. Everything is nice and flat. Perfectly, perfectly flat. I'm just going to leave it sit right here. Just, just a little. I'm going to take my iron. I'm going to put it on top. <laughs> I'll move it around back and forth just a sec so I don't burn anything. And then I go ahead and iron and steam press the whole entire block while I'm here. To get those creases out, you can even turn your block around. I'm not going to cut any of this back away. I'm just going to leave it. Some people cut it away. I'm not going to bother. There's no point because I use the center glue stuff. So... Either way, I'd only be cutting out this section, and I think that's kind of dumb because the fabric is already doubled in these points right here, so it doesn't really matter. So this is nice and fused down, Add a little bit more steam. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to do the same stitch right here around this. So let's go over to the sewing machine and do that. Make sure that I'm in the correct position. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Sit on my ab ball. We're going to stick this under here. And this one is just a curve, so you can go fast. Make sure you line that needle up at its outer point when it's pointed out to the outer part of your piece, you know, all these outer pieces. Make sure you're doing that same lineup with the center and I'm using that same purple. I'm not even going to switch to black because I actually like the look of the applique purple color. And what I'm going to do is get it lined up just right. And I'm going to stitch in a circle around this. As soon as I get this on guys, I'm going to put my, um, camera in the correct position that I always have it in so you'll have some wiggling unfortunately but I'm gonna put the camera up so I can show you how I put this together since I'm ahead of my time that I anticipated being on since I'm going a little bit faster I'm gonna change out the camera position so you guys can see everything else so I'm just turning this piece as I go all the way in a complete circle. 
Going back to the beginning, I'm going to go over those previous stitch stitches just for a, not even a quarter of an inch, really. And I'm going to trim this away. Go underneath and trim that. And that's nice and cut away. So now that center oops, is applicated on nicely. All right, so there that is. It's done. This block is now complete. So now, don't mind me, guys. I'm going to turn the. I'm going to put the camera where it normally is, okay? okay, so that you guys can see a fuller angle, okay? So give me two seconds to situate that, because I don't. I know the wiggling and wobbling might annoy you guys, but all right. So I'm re. I'm warning you in advance. Wiggling. My room is a disaster, by the way. Hi, guys. All right, let's get this up in here. Sorry about the wiggling. All right. Normal position. Here we go, guys. Right there. Okay. Hi, everyone. Look at me. I can see you now. Okay. Or you can see me, I should say. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So here was my last two pieces I needed. Now I'm going to go grab the rest of the project very slowly like because I'm kind of slow. <sighs> Even though I'm actually faster than I thought I would be. Move my iron out of the way. All right, so I'm going to grab my pieces to the project and I'm going to go ahead and sew everything without even um, bothering putting my center, I'm just going to put my center in anyway. My center is a solid white piece that I'm going to be applicating something on, but I can applique it while it's together. So remember those little pieces I told you about? This is a 13 inch block. If you want to sash this block like I am doing with your leftover pieces, this is those leftover pieces sewn together. This is four of them sewn together, turned into a two inch by four and a half inch square. So four of them make a two and a half, or two inch by four inch square. It was actually bigger, but I trimmed it down to be nice and straight. So for this 13 and a half inch block, what I gone and done, and you'll see in a second, is I centered these, so it's four and a half inches. I needed two five inch pieces for the ends. So I'll show you right now. Here is my sashing, what it looks like. It's creative, right? Now, watch this, because I, I don't like to waste, and you guys know this, and I like to make projects out of my scraps. Well, I just so happen to put this together. So this is one row, and I have two more rows. The other row, is two rows already made like this. Now I just have to put the sashing in between these two pieces and stick them in the center and then it will be complete. So let's put these boogers in here. And let's grab my sashing pieces. They come out to 13 and a half. So again, five inch by two inch, four and a half by two inch, and five inch equals 13 and a half inches when you take those seams out. So it's really scrappy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by right sides together on my block. And I'm going to line the end up right here, straighten my piece up. I'm not even going to pin anything. There's no purpose in it. They line up their exact cuts. If your quarter inch seam is exact, I should say, then they are exact cuts. I'm going to hold. <coughs> <coughs> Whoa. I need water after that one. <laughs> I inhaled my spit from talking. <laughs> I know you guys have had that problem. Line this end up right here. They should match, obviously, like nice and flat. I just like to hold this end so there's no shifting. We're going to lay this on here. Sew down it with a quarter inch seam. All right, 
And this sashing, I'm pressing inward because my other seams for my along the center press um, the other way. So these ones are just going this way. Now I need my blank block. Where's my blank block? Here's my blank block, which is going in the center. So this goes right sides together on here. Again, it's a 13 and a half inch block. And the blank block is because it's going to get a different applique on it, which I will add later. I haven't made that yet. But I will get to it. I haven't decided between a unicorn and butterflies. I'm not sure yet. I like butterflies the best, but I kind of wanted to do a shadow unicorn in purple, but I don't know. It might be too much purple. All right. So now I'm going to grab my sashing piece, put it on this side because I'm just making a really large nine patch. If you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> Which you guys all know how to do, but this is just made with really big blocks. This is going to make a wall hanging. It's technically baby size, but I'm making a wall hanging. Alright. Fold this one under. Press the seam. I'm pressing the seam this way. I know it seems counter whatever the word is as to you know pressing towards the light color but unfortunately the way the seams lined up it had to be so i'm gonna take my last block and there's no position that it needs to specifically be in i just lay it here that way they all end up in a different you know direction lay this on here and i'm only putting these sashing pieces in the middle the rest of the quilt will be um the i'll close it off with a black um, border and then another border, which I'll show you guys. I already planned all of it. After I get these out, I'm going to go press this real quick before I add it to the center and then I'll show you. Okay. How the two are put together. So again, I'm just holding this end as if it was a pin. For me, it helps. Please do unicorn. You love to see that. <laughs> I have well now that I have the internet back, I can actually try. I have to draw it off the the big TV that you guys can that I'm recording off of because it it was impossible to do a unicorn from a screen like this, you know. All right, so let me go press these two center pieces real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, I'm actually still here. You can hear me. I just need to press them. Real quickly, so it lays flat when I join this into the middle of those other two. <laughs> yeah, I liked the unicorn idea. The unicorn was my first idea, and I love butterflies, but I think a unicorn would be way different, you know, and super uh, eye catchy. Because I was kind of thinking that this is quilt show, quilt show quality. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take this. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to put them together like so. And since everything was already pre-sewn, which is not normal for my videos to have pre-sewn stuff, but I did it. I'm going to hook these together and sew this big, huge seam. And then I'm going to come down. The only area I'm going to worry about right now is this first intersection where the seams come together when making this. This is the first one I'm going to worry about. So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to nest these two seams and I'm going to hold this seam right here on my way down. This is the only part I'm going to worry about is this first nesting. And I'm just going to hold it. Obviously, you guys can pin. I don't really pin much. Obviously, I had to pin the Dresdens itself, but I'm not much of a pinner, and you guys know it. And that's that second one, and then I'm going to come down to the next 
first seam that needs to be nested and hold those two together. Again, like I said, it's not very long of a seam, so I mean, you really, you can pin it if you want, but it's not necessary because each piece was exact to size, you know, so. And again, if you want those measurements, everything, the Dresdens were cut from five inch squares, two per each square, then, I'm trying to get so slow so you guys can hear me over the sewing. Um, then the block that the Dresden goes on is 13 and a half inches. And then the circle that's in the center is actually a circle from a three and a half inch size square. Um, and uh, then the sashing pieces, I used all those scraps. Um, it was shy one, that's why there's some pieces, which I'm gonna just put those in the back of the quilt. Um, those scraps were sewn together and turned in four four scrap pieces were turned into a two inch by four and a half inch piece connecting with two five inch by two inch pieces. Take those seams away and you have a 13 and a half inch strip. All right, this one's on here. Now I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna grab this next piece and I'm gonna make sure that my sashing is going on the correct side, which is this side. And I'm gonna sew down this. Again, I'm just gonna start here at the top. I'm gonna do a small back stitch, holding it nice and flat. And obviously there will be still pictures. Don't, don't forget to join that group below. You guys, there's so much information down below. There's the group to join for all of you that are subscribed to my channel. You can join the Facebook group. It says Facebook group for Tiffany's Quilting Life community group. And then there's my Facebook page where I sell my quilts or I post quilts that are like something that people can purchase um, to give an idea of what to buy. But there's usually a mix of stuff. So that's a link down below. Um, my Instagram is down below. My address where you guys can send me things if you guys want to send something or just fan mail. I know people send stuff. So, I mean, there's an address down there. And there's a link to, oh, my Etsy shop, but it has nothing in it right now. I, I'm getting ready to re-up my Etsy shop. I just haven't put anything in it yet. But um, I'll get to it, obviously, when I get to it. But other than that, there's, there's stuff. And I always, sometimes I put directions down below in the description so don't forget to read the description find what you're looking for um sometimes if a video has more than one uh episode to it the links to each episode would be in the video like the mariner star that one has that video if you guys look for that that has if you look for video five it has video one through four in the description below it makes it easy to watch just like video one has one through or two through five in it so, and that's coming next. I got some of the pieces cut and ready to start sewing so you guys can watch it. But I just haven't got it situated yet. So I have to finish situating. I'm not as fast, obviously. But don't forget, you guys can find all that below. So, but yeah, in the group, there's... For those of you that don't, you can't see the rest of the finished projects on still photos. So all you guys see is this. If you join the group, you can see those still photos. And you guys can uh, be able to um, see how they look <laughs> up close and in a picture instead of the video and moving around and so on and so forth. The video is mainly for the direction tutorial part of things and or chit chat and so whatever. I do have to bind a quilt today too, as well. The last quilt of the year just came off of the long arm at four o'clock this morning. Took me two hours to do, but the machine only ran for an hour and a half, but it was 95 degrees the whole time. I went in the pool four times. Like I literally was quilting in my, I was in my bathing suit doing some quilting. I'm sweating my butt off, jumped in the pool, got out of the pool, got back to some quilting. I was, you know, my breast area touches that top bar. So I kept getting the quilt wet. I'm like, 
fuck is I was just soaked it. I had to stay wet and I had the fans blowing on me every time I got out of the pool so I could stay feeling cool. It's a hot disaster out there. So today or last night was the last quilt for the summer until about September 15th or so. I'll be able to bring the machine back outside because it's way too hot to quilt. So any quilting videos, even on Facebook, in the group, they're all going to be done sit down because nothing is going to be done on the frame. Unfortunately, not having a, um, my machine in the house kind of makes it awkward and hard. All right, so I'm coming to this last piece. And then I'll press it real quick and show you guys. And then obviously I'll get the borders on. And then show you, I'll post pictures in the group so you guys can see. All right, I'm going to go press it. I, I'm not really going far, obviously. <laughs> oh, and there's corner stones that are two inch by two inch on here. Just so you guys, uh, if anybody was curious about that. And I'm also pressing these seams to the white as well. I know it's counterproductive on that, you know, the whole trying to hide dark under light. But once it's quilted, you guys really won't even see that stuff. But it lays better. That's the way the seam wants to lay. So that's the way I'm going to let it lay. And if any of this white seems dirty when I hold this up, it's only because it's been drug around and white fabric. This is why I use more black than white. But this white is catching the dirtiness of my iron. It's catching the dirtiness of my, my uh, cutting table. It's just catching all the dirty and dust everywhere. That's why I don't work with white ever. I hate white. But it looks good in this one, so I guess that's okay. And I made the cornerstones on this the same as my backing color, which kind of highlights it. It looks really good. So, all right, guys. The center is going to get something all on its own. bottom so with those sashing pieces from all that extra all those leftover pieces of fabric created a whole totally different design so that's it obviously with the white cornerstones everything has a center and they're all done they're all in black I just love this look though I, I think I'm gonna do this with sashing more often with extra pieces just put them in because I totally love this with all that purple. And whatever I applique in that center is going to be black and or the background. So let me show you how I'll finish this. Let me go grab the fabric. I'm gonna lay this right here so you can see it. We'll put that right there and we'll put that down so that it'll hold it. <clears throat> So obviously black will be the first border, two inches, and then I'm going to put that zebra print. Let's see if I can't hold it up to it. So I'll get a black border as a stopping border is what it's called. And then I'll probably do a four and a half, five inch border of the zebra print. So it'll be like this. All right, guys. So that's what's going to happen. So that's my next step. And I will post pictures once the whole top is complete. Minus my center applique. I'll, like I said, I'll get to that later. It's going to be raw edge because I'm just going to do it with my double-sided blue stuff because I have a whole bolt of it. Um, yeah, this is how to make Dresden plates. And I did it. Well, I had to do this end part. So I did the, all the applique and everything in under an hour. So... An hour per block, say you do one block a day, in 30 days, you'll have 30 blocks and an hour a day. Or if you spend two hours a day, then you two blocks a day. And if you are not talking like I am and making a tutorial, actually, it goes faster. <laughs> so that's it, guys. That is what I have created. It's 
I don't know the size. I'll post it in the group later so that you guys will know how big it actually turns out. Um, yeah, because I actually didn't math those calculations yet. So, all right, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dresden plate video. I'm glad I was actually able to save a piece for today since I was supposed to do this yesterday, but we had no internet. Um, I love these colors. Purple is my favorite color. Dresden is my second favorite block because my first favorite is an eight-pointed star, which you guys know that. I make a lot of eight-pointed stars. <laughs> I love eight-pointed stars. And Dresden is my second favorite, and I have more favorites. but um, And blacks and purples and white. I mean, come on now. Look at this, guys. It's amazing. Hope you guys make something like this, too. Uh, Till then, I will see you guys next time. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. That's down here. And don't forget to the description below. Like I said, there's so many things there, ways to contact me, um, so on and so forth. Send mail, send letters, send cards, postcards. I like postcards. You know, I haven't actually had a postcard in like 10, 15 years. It's been a long time. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. Why don't they get up? Did you show Moana? Ah, oh, shit.